See, that's me playing the, there's a, this is my talent. There's a guy in Montreal, for people who, who, who out there who are from Montreal, let me know if you know this guy, in front of Ogilvy's in Montreal, who would play the spoons. But I don't even think he was a poor street performer, but he would play the spoons in front of Ogilvy's, a big department store in Montreal. And it was, I mean, the guy was, was a local treasure. Uh, so this is my equivalent to, but it's totally irrelevant. I shouldn't have started the video off this way. This is the last video I think I'm uploading for the year uh, before our big live stream tomorrow. That's tomorrow, the Christmas show, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's in front of a live audience in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, I think tickets are $30 with proceeds going to uh, Christmas charity. And um, we're going to have a discount for people who join up at Mug Club and a portion of those Mug Club signups will also be going to, uh, I think, Christmas baskets. I'm not entirely sure the charity. I don't have the information in front of me, but it is Dallas, Texas, Wednesday, December 18th, 8 p.m. Eastern, so 7 p.m. Central for people who are actually going to be out in Dallas, Texas. Uh, and that'll be a Christmas variety show. You know what it was? Three years ago, I was waterboarded by Tim Kennedy as part of a Christmas telethon. Two years ago, I did a 16 hour CNN live stream and I didn't want to do that again. Betty, what's going on? Where's Betty? Oh, did you run out of peanut butter? It's just crazy about peanut What did, did you dig a hole? Look at this. She dug a hole. Look at Betty. Oh. You dug a, she dug a hole outside and got filthy, I guess. I just noticed. Come on, what, is there any more peanut butter? Anyway, uh, the reason we're doing it Wednesday, by the way, Wednesday, December 18th, as a, let me let this, let me let this little bitch out. Just, it's okay, we don't need to stop filming. Go ahead, Betty. Go ahead to Mama. Love you. Bye. The second I start filming the video, she says, no, you know what? I'm not gonna stick around with the Kong peanut butter toy. By the way, if anyone knows any indestructible dog toys, um, Apparently the definition doesn't fit with Benny. She's destroyed every single indestructible dog toy that we've ever purchased. So uh, if you want to become a sponsor, uh, take the test. We'd be more than happy to welcome you. December 18th. Let me get back to this. I didn't want to be waterboarded or do a 16-hour CNN live stream. So we're doing a Christmas variety show, musical performances, surprise guests. It'll be a lot of fun tomorrow. And the reason we're doing it Wednesday is because there's a debate Thursday and a Star Wars release, as I understand it. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Please hold your comments. Hold your comments, Star Wars folks. I'm going to explain my position. You may not like it, but just hear me out. And I know you probably won't. Uh, December 18th, anyways. Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Eventbrite, search it. Okay, so Star Wars. I have to go see Star Wars with my nephew. Um, I'm trying to... This, okay, let me know what you guys think about Star Wars. I know, you know what, I know what you th there's going to be two categories, people who love it, and then people who really love it. And there'll be some people, I don't think, because people who hate Star Wars are afraid to speak out. And I know now people can speak out if they're like, oh, the SJW element of Star Wars, Let's, that has it, nothing to do with that. People ask sometimes why I don't cover that more. I don't really care about it all that much. So let me explain to you my thoughts on Star Wars. Please, let me explain. I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying to be more careful here in, in, than in dealing with gender dysphoria. <laughs> Because I'm worried that uh, people will misconstrue this. I, as it relates to Star Wars, and the show is tomorrow, December 18th, Wednesday, uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm not a fan. Now, I don't hate Star Wars, but I think what I dislike most about Star Wars is people talk about, like, existing in a binary. With Star Wars, people do categorize you as either you love Star Wars, you appreciate it, or you don't get it. Now, let me be clear. I don't hate Star Wars, but I get it. I understand it, and I still don't love it. I still don't think that it's great. Um, here's the thing. I, the, what, what really bothers me about the Star Wars fans is they get all upset, and, and I think that when they get indignant, and Johnny Boy is phoning this right now, I can see he's cracking a smile because he knows the kind of absolute hellfire that is going to rain down upon me for daring to speak out against, and I'm not speaking out against Star Wars, but people get really upset if you just say, listen, come on. You're getting upset about Star Wars now. The changes to the newer series, you know, you have episode one, two, and three, and everyone kind of now unilaterally agrees that those were not great films. And the newer Star Wars are okay, but not necessarily, some of them aren't great. Some, I've seen all of them. There was one more recently that I liked. I don't remember which one it was because they kind of all bleed together. But what bothers me is people who get upset at the newer Star Wars films because they're like, wow, it's been kidified. It's been turned, it's been turned into really just a commercial opportunity or to try and get to Chinese markets. It's a, it's a licensing play. It was always for kids, Star Wars. That's the thing. And it's okay. It's okay. It, they, they're fun movies for kids. 
But I always thought it was funny when people were like, oh, I can't. Can you believe what, what they did with Star Wars and Jar Jar Binks? And it's right. And oh, Misa Jar Jar Binks, and it's racist. And it's just, and it's now they've gone so far. They're trying to turn this into a Nickelodeon show. I'm going, hold on a second. Did you see the dancing Ewoks? And they go, well, that's the third Star Wars. That was before, that was, that was when, once it got commercialized. Okay, let's go back to the very first one where half of the story is explained in writing. I mean, that to, the, to me is the equivalent of just sort of going back and explaining away something that doesn't make sense in a film. Like if like Die Hard, where they were writing the script as they were shooting the film. And then you, if you go back and watch Die Hard, um, there's a documentary about this on Netflix right now, the films that made us where uh, they hide an ambulance in a truck, but there's a shot where the ambulance isn't in the truck. And so they tried to fix it with some line of dialogue that got cut. That's what you're doing with the start of all the Star Wars films. Like, hey, by the way, here's the backstory. We ran out of budget. We had to spend it on figurines and bobblehead dolls. I'm not saying that there's nothing good about Star Wars. I understand the special effects for their time. And I understand that, you know, it has all of this, this, this deep meaning to a lot. And I understand that it means a lot to people. So I'm not trying to take that away from you. I just do find it a little bit irritating when fans tell you that you don't get it if you don't like Star Wars and then bitch about it now being for kids. We'll go back to the very first one. What is it, episode four? It's a bear with a bow and arrow. And bitch, you're going across space. And I mean, the, the film didn't end with Darth Vader going, no, like, this, is, this, is, this is for children, right? It's a, it's a film that was maybe not as kiddie, and, I, and the way I look at it is, you know, the first film, don't like it. Uh, Return of the Jedi, do not like it. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, decent film. You know, kids movie, family friendly, decent movie. I don't think that it's, 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 it's groundbreaking. And then I remember when they re-released the Star Wars, you remember that, Johnny Boy, they re-released the Star Wars in theaters, um, the original ones, and people were really, really upset that George Lucas added some CGI to it and that it made the film worse. And they felt like it had been, you know, their child. They've been robbed of their childhood. It is his film. He does have the right to do with it what he wants. And you did put all of your hopes and dreams in the hands of the guy who did Howard the Duck. Like this is not a guy who did any other good films, really. The closest is American Graffiti, and at best, it's passable. So my point is, he doesn't have a track record of making good films. People complain about the new Star Wars films where George Lucas had more of a hand in it. And they really only liked the Star Wars films where George Lucas didn't have any hand in it. But he was the one who created Star Wars, which we're supposed to believe were these groundbreaking, fantastic films, but were only subsequently tainted by George Lucas. My point is this. I think a lot of people don't understand that Star Wars was always meant to be more so, not entirely, but it was aimed at children, or at least more so than a lot of people now want to... Um, I don't want to say give it credit for, but acknowledge. Like there was a guy, was it recently just, he was crying at the new Star Wars trailer and everyone was making fun of this guy. He's like, ah, I can't believe it, Luke Skywalker. And I feel bad for the kid. Like, first of all, I think that was a horrible choice to upload a video of you crying to a trailer for a science fiction film. But here's why I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon and bully that guy. I remember people doing that at the preview for The Phantom Menace, okay? And it's become cool now to go and say, oh, The Phantom Menace was terrible. That is not what people were saying when The Phantom Menace came out. Came out, co comment below and tell me if you remember this. I remember, I had no idea why the theater was packed. I was seeing some other movie incidentally in Canada. I had no idea this was the, the premiere of the preview for Phantom Menace and people were gasping. Oh, oh my God. And they were doing these interviews for local television afterward with CBC and people going, this is just this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. And then they saw Phantom Menace and for the first few weeks, I remember I went to go see it because everyone convinced me that it was awesome. And I saw it, and I can only say this now because the Star Wars fans have retroactively made it okay to dislike The Phantom Menace, but that wasn't the case back then. I went back with my dad and my brother. We were in uh, uh, somewhere in upstate New York. We went across the border because we used to go there for, you know, things like Old Navy and Taco Bell. Cool stuff that we didn't have in Canada at the time. And I was like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure about this Phantom Menace, but let me get my, my brother and my dad to go see it. And they laughed so hard in the theater, out loud, that people were shushing them. They were furious. And I mean, they were laughing out loud at how crappy it was, like Jar Jar Binks and that, that uh, character. I remember the, that, the that's pad racing, that, that thing. I, that's all I remember from the film, that's pad racing and some little, some little bug that had a big nose. Do you know what I'm talking Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, anyway, we were laughing so hard people got furious because this movie meant so much and they loved it and they were, afterwards, someone argued, you just, you, just, you don't get it. 
Now, here's the thing with Star Wars. Some people don't get it, under, understand it. I have people in my family who try and, you know, hold it to the standard of reality. It's not. It's a science fiction film, right? It's fantasy. But some people do get it and don't like it. And some people do get it and think that it's not great filmmaking, certainly not good writing. That's where I would consider myself. Somebody who understands what Star Wars is about. I liked it when I was a kid, the original films. Uh, when I went back and watched them, I didn't think they were, I didn't enjoy them as much as an adult. And uh, when people complain about the newer films being a licensing play or a merchandising play and that it's been kidified, I say, you know what? However old you are now, go back and watch the originals and tell me that eh, there wasn't a little bit of that in there. I think there was. And you comment below and let me know if you're looking forward to the Star Wars film. If you're not, another thing, I don't think Godfather's all that great of a film. That's not, people get really mad. I can say anything I want politically. When I tell people, I think Chinatown was the better movie that year. Again, I challenge you, go back. And I, I understand that you have to accept films for what they are at that period in time. Go back and watch Godfather and Chinatown and tell me which one's better. And Roman Polanski raped a kid. Right? So get that. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that Roman Polanski is, I'm not his, his bud. I'm not a fan I just think that there's some sort of sacred cows out there in the realm of film that, you know, we're not allowed to, uh, to touch. Or in this case, maybe for some people, torch. Um, anyway, the Christmas show is tomorrow, Wednesday, December 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be live streaming it, of course, here on YouTube, 7 p.m. Central. Go to Eventbrite, search uh, Crowder, you'll find it. Buy a ticket. Uh, we'll have a good time. And let me know what you think about it. So I'll go see it with my nephew, you know, I'll, but I'll just, I'll enjoy it for what it is. I'll be watching my nephew watch Star Wars more than I'll really care about the film. And that's, I hope you guys, that's not a slight to anyone who loves Star Wars. It's just, you know, it's my opinion and uh, I'm an adult.